Hello and good morning, Tantra fam. My name is Michelle Quiroz and I'm recording this video to talk to you guys about my entire tantric journey. I'm going to be nice and open and vulnerable with you guys. Uh, yeah, just to just to get the thing going, man. Congratulations to you guys for finishing or getting close to finishing uh, the level one certification. I know that was a really deep dive. Shadow work kicked my ass. I'll get into that here towards the end of the video. Um, but it was really cool. It was really beautiful. I've been practicing Tantra now for about two and a half years, uh, getting a little bit more deeply integrated into the practice within the past eight months or so. And I've been practicing yoga for about four years now, uh, starting the practice when I was about 19 years old. And it's been absolutely groundbreaking, really healing, really mind shifting. Um, as I'm sure everybody who's in this course and who does both of the practices in general could relate to that statement. It's really awesome that we still have these ancient tools and that we have the desire to uh, move inwards and face our shit, quite literally, excuse my language. But um, yeah, it's been a really beautiful journey. I will be talking um, a lot slash a little bit about my journey into my sexuality. I know that Tantra is so much more than sex, um, but my life has been really drenched in, in it, to be quite honest. And it's now within the course of these past few years that I'm starting to realize, oh, I understand why X, Y, Z happened and why I had to go through these experiences and really power through so that I can be the woman that I am today. And as the days roll by, I'm really, really proud of everything that I've gone through and, and quite honestly grateful for the gunk, for the shit, for the trauma, because there's duality in everything. For every darkness, there is a light. For every yin, there is a yang. And I'm really starting to understand and trust in the process of all hardships that we all uh, go through, no matter what it is. So my, my experiences with, I guess, not just necessarily my sexuality, but within my body, myself, I've gone from... Uh, trauma in terms of over exploitation into the world of sexuality and touching to entering uh, uh mixed in with just having fun with sex and doing it unconsciously but still finding deep pleasure in it regardless if it was traumatizing or for myself and then moving into a couple years of asexuality and complete disconnection from my body and when i say that i mean i would put my hand on my leg and i couldn't my hand can feel my leg but my my leg couldn't feel my hand and that's what got me into Tantra. And then uh, now that I'm into my Tantra practice, um, understanding the beauty and breath and connection and energy work and orgasms and deep sensation within my womb and within my heart and within my mind. Um, so I am, I was very uh, lucky to be reared by a mother who did not suppress or shame me for my natural desire and my natural curiosity to masturbate or to touch and explore myself uh, as a young girl. Um, and as I get older, I'm like, damn, my mom is a real badass for just um, allowing and holding space for me and never saying, oh, Michelle, don't do that. It was always like, okay, do that, but do it in private. Um, now, that beauty in that was also mixed with, I am a survivor of 15 years of sexual assault. I have uh, six different uh, abusers, all of which were family members, and that was such an interesting journey for me. Um, to be completely raw and vulnerable uh, with this whole situation, the my first course of abusers, it was so natural to me that I didn't even know that it was something that was wrong. It was something that I actually quite enjoyed and I knew it was supposed to be a secret and it kind of developed a sense of me where I already knew how to flirt with men. I knew how to please a man uh, at a very young age. And so it, it created this intense flirtatiousness inside of me that I didn't really knew, know what to do with it. And I didn't know that it was something that I was supposed to hold, hold back or to use in a different way. Uh, I started going to therapy for it at the age of six years old and then from 6 to 14, I was in talk therapy. And although I do have respect for psychology, I was going to school for transpersonal psychology and I would love to go back. I do believe that talk therapy is a very, very important part of healing of any kind of wounding. Uh, but learning Tantra and yoga uh, has definitely helped me understand that there's also a lot of emotional and uh, energetic release that we need to be getting into, uh, not only just playing with the scenarios in your mind. Um, so as I was saying, from the age of six to 14 years old, I was going, you know, through talk therapy and there was some pieces in it where I, where, um, I was able to realize a lot of things about myself. Um, 
at the age of 10 years old is whenever puberty kicked in, I started developing breasts. I started my period, hormones started coming in and I started to realize, I guess the weight of my childhood started to come on my shoulders, if you will. And at that age, I did not have the tools, nor did anybody in my family or any of my psychologists at the time provide me with these tools of learning how to deal with my shit. Um, again, excuse my language. Um, so I resorted to cutting. I started cutting at 10 years old. And then on top of that, I my um, promiscuous journey, if you will, started at that age as well. And it, looking back at it now in retrospect, I'm understanding that that was something that really didn't need to happen. My teenage years and my rebelness or my need to take control and harm myself was me owning my body. Like, oh, I'm going to hurt myself before you get a chance to do it because I can do it better than you, you know? And it was a uh, it was a defense mechanism, you know? I wanted to prove to the world that I was powerful, that I had control of my body. Um, and so I started cutting myself at a very young age, uh, which I did until I was about 17 years old. Uh, and then I started uh, engaging in sexual activities at a very young age as well, um, which was a which was interesting. Uh, obviously, I was doing it from a very unconscious place. Um, so that was going on. I also started doing very heavy drugs. Um, at also a very young age, starting about 13 or 14 years old to once again be very vulnerable with you guys and open. Um, and I was just, I was having fun with it, man. I was living like the rock and roll lifestyle, but from a very uh, unnecessarily young age and a very extremely unconscious place. But once again, it, it was what I needed to do to validate my own body, to say this is mine, you know. Um, I started reading. Uh, books have been such a powerful, powerful friend man they really have um uh looking back now as well uh, i suppose my journey into ancient practices began at around 15 years old without knowing that this is what it was going to be there was a book that i read i don't know if you guys have heard of it called a million little pieces uh, it was a the dude was on oprah um, but he basically writes about his journey into drug addiction and how he was going to rehab and how he met a friend named Leonard and, or Leonard, excuse me. And within that book, he talks about a book that he read when he was in rehab called The Tao of Pooh. And it's this super cute, easy to read book on Taoism. It's Winnie the Pooh and Piglet talking about the way, how to be, how to be like water, how to be fluid, how to just accept, you know? And I remember... I remember wanting to feel better, but not knowing that I had that option because I had been living in shit for so long and everybody around me had been living in shit for so long that I was like, this is life, man. And cool, these are these little outlets, but I read this book and it was like that first little glimpse, that first little, that, that first little glimpse of light that God gave me. Um, and so I read that book and, uh, and then from there I kind of, Put it on the back burner, but I always had it and I always recommended it to people. And it was something that I practiced, but didn't really practice, if you know what I mean. And uh, it, throughout my teenage years, to be quite honest, I was having some of the most explorative, very fun, very easy sex of my life. It was such a fun and interesting time. Um, and I would say most of my sexual experiences came from that. And I'm really grateful that I have had that, you know, I'm grateful that I now know that I knew that I know what I like, um, that I know um, how to have fun. I knew what my boundaries were. I knew I knew sex on a very superficial level. Um, but anyway, my depression continued. Um, uh, and about my senior year in high school was probably the darkest time. I was in a relationship with a man for five years who really held it down. And he was a really beautiful being. He was also dealing with his own shit, but he was the only person who knew my stuff and did not judge me. He didn't shame me. He understood if I needed to cry and break down, he would hold me and let me cry and break down. I mean, he was a really, really solid man. And I mean, we're still, we broke up about four years ago and we are still, we're still really good friends. Like, he'll, he's a really cool dude. Um, 
but anyway, uh, within our relationship, we had a very drug induced relationship. And my senior year of high school, um, and once again, here comes my vulnerability. I was really addicted to cocaine and LSD, which is a really interesting mix. Um, and I gave up. And I, my, my depression gave up to a sense of, I didn't even care. I was, I was suicidal, you know, throughout my later years in life. Um, but I didn't care. I didn't even want to kill myself anymore. I didn't want to get better. It was just like, this is life. I'm going to do drugs. I'm going to fuck. And this is it, you know? And I'd, I've always been really interested in psychology ever since a, a really young age, um, uh, I would remember I would read my mom's textbooks and I would be really fascinated with investigation, discovery, trying to understand why serial killers and rapists and child molesters, why they were like that. Like what happened to them and why were these patterns in, of, of abuse continuing on? So as I was in, in uh, high school, I was going to go, I started you know, going to college and um, I was studying forensic psychology and my game plan was to work in Sam, the, Sam Houston, go to Sam Houston and then work in the state prison in Huntsville and then just talk to these guys like, what's up, man? You know, and I would read these books um, and I still have them. And sometimes, you know, I still have them. They're, they're, they're good reads, but I would read these case studies of really grotesque experiences from these from these um, abusers, these people. Who had also gone through rape um, and that's why they were continuously acting out but I mean my my I was so obsessed with the darkness of the human mind because all I knew was the darkness of the human mind nobody had ever introduced to me any other concept other than shit other than darkness other than abuse you know and even whenever I was in psychology like there was never there was never a groundbreaking experience for me um, ex except for one, uh, one of the last therapists that I had, she said something that was really interesting to me. And she said, um, do you think that the reason you're so, and I, I guess I said this early in the video, do you think that the reason you're so promiscuous is you once again say yes before anybody fights you on your no, so that you never have to go through that again. And that, that was a really interesting reflection on me, but it angered me at the time. Like, how dare you say that, you know? But anyway, so I was in college studying forensic psychology, and this is when life happens, uh, when life really fucking happened, you know? So my first semester in college, I was taking a couple courses, two of the most groundbreaking, shape-shifting classes of my life was uh, dance appreciation and intro to psychology. And um, my dance appreciation class was the a class that I took that helped me understand movement. And as somebody who was always really embodied, I was very sexual and I was very harming. Like if I felt an emotion, I had to hurt myself to express an emotion, you know? So I was very, uh, very physical person. And so taking that dance appreciation class taught me that there's so much history and movement from culture to culture and within genders and within expression and what a contraction means and what an expansion means and how ballerinas are high on their toes because their faith and their connection to God is high in the ceiling and how people in the islands or in Central America dance really wavy and low to the earth because their God and their connection to divinity is the earth. So it was really cool to see like, wow, we are expressing ourselves with our body. And that was the first little introduction that I got to. This is an expressive vessel, you know, from a conscious place. And then around the same time, I was taking my psychology class and we started learning about positive psychology, which was awesome because it was the first time ever that anybody told me I can study the human mind in a way that is a darkness. And positive psychology is the study of happiness, how to maintain levels of happiness and the different levels of happiness that can be achieved. And I was like, holy shit, like I can study this beautiful thing that we have in our heads and it doesn't have to be from a dark place. And that week that we started positive psychology, my dance appreciation professor came up to me and she was like, hey, Michelle, I'm, you know, teaching yoga on these days. If you want extra credit, just come, you know. And I thought absolutely nothing of it. I was a weightlifter at the time, so I already had a really good mind to muscle connection when it came to pushing myself. And I had a good form and I was like, you know what? Cool. I'll do yoga thinking absolutely nothing of it. And I showed up with a like a you know, Walmart mat, not that it matters. And I had my little water bottle 
And she goes, you know, inhale, put your arms up. And then exhale, bring it back down. And we did that over and over again. And it was literally right then and there. I haven't stepped off my mat since. It was the first introduction to tapping into my body, to taking a deep conscious breath, and to releasing this, the, the pain, the weight that I was holding on to in a way that wasn't cutting myself, in a way that wasn't taking drugs, in a way that wasn't fucking my way into oblivion, you know? It was like, holy shit. Like, I can do this with my breath. I can do this with some poses. I can do this with my hand gesture. And when I say I was addicted to yoga, excuse me, um, I was addicted to yoga. And it was, my whole life went boom. Like, I was just flipping a pancake from one side to the other, and there was a whole other side to cook, you know, a whole other side to bake and warm up and give some time and get some heat into, you know? And so... Um, I would sit in my room. I started my, my first year of my yoga practice off YouTube. And I would sit in my room for hours and do yoga, you know. And I didn't share this earlier in the video, but I also suffered from really bad uh, paranoia that started at a very young age. My first abuser, uh, when I was six years old, we took him to court. He fled the country, and so we never went to court. And that started really bad paranoia because I always was fearful of, of him coming back and finding me and getting revenge, you know? And so I always had really, really bad paranoia, acute paranoia, but it was really uncomfortable to live with. Um, and uh, I started off, I would do vinyasa with my professor, but when I would go home, I would do a lot of yin yoga. Uh, if you're not familiar with what yin yoga is, it's sitting in a pose from anywhere for five to 20 minutes and just sitting in that restorative posture and breathing through the different layers of discomfort that come from opening that muscle and your central nervous system saying, okay, let me get out, like this is uncomfortable and literally give, like saying, okay, I'm, I'm breathing in this pose. And the pose that saved my life was uh, Pashimottanasana, which is seated forward fold, uh, just quite literally flexing my feet and folding my thighs or my, my tummy over my thighs. And I had really bad claustrophobia as well. And as I would lit, sit and breathe through this pose for 10 to 20 minutes, multiple times a day, um, my brain would go have these really silly thoughts and say, Oh my God, Michelle, what if you got buried like this? Like what if somebody buried you alive and you were stuck like this and this is how you're stuck in a coffin? What if you pull something and you get par paralyzed and nobody's going to find you until the morning or nobody's going to find you for three days and you're just going to be stuck like this? What if you get stuck? Like my mind was trying to get me, like I couldn't fold. I couldn't come in towards myself. I couldn't bow to myself because my body was so scared of, oh my God, what if you get stuck like this, you know? And I would breathe through that and I would just observe that. And the more time that I stayed on in this pose, the more calm I became, the more centered I became, the more aware of my thoughts. I, I, oh, there's nobody, there's nobody in the backseat of my car. There's nobody in my closet. I turn off the lights. There's nobody in this room. I know that there's nobody in my room. And I was able to really observe my thoughts. Uh, three books that changed my life uh, once I really began my yoga journey. The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I'm actually rereading right now. Uh, the Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph uh, Murphy, and then The Secret. I don't know who writes that, but Rhonda something or another. I can't see from here. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and then I started doing yin, and then I started teaching myself um, arm balances and inversions. So, um, yeah, that was the beginning of my, my tantra journey, or excuse me, my yoga journey. And once again, it was that first introduction to I can heal myself without pain. And here comes that 360 also. I was in a, a beautiful drug-like relationship uh, with a man. And um, yoga ruined my relationship for the better. Uh, this is a really young, long video. I'm so sorry. Um, but yoga ruin, ruined my relationship for the better. It, immediately, I stopped doing drugs. And it was a very, I wouldn't say immediately, uh, I would occasionally do drugs when I would go out to shows, but it wasn't like an everyday, every weekend thing. Um, I started to lose sexual attraction towards my partner because I started to realize 
the weight of the relationship and I started to grow mentally and emotionally and gain more self-awareness and he was still here. Therefore, I was no longer attracted to my partner in that sense, uh, which I'll, I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, yeah, and I started, you know, started to meditate, got into crystals, got into more reading. And uh, as I started to draw away from my partner sexually, I would still have sex with him because that's what you're supposed to do. You're in a relationship. You guys have sex. I was no longer able to orgasm and I was no longer able to get wet. The video froze on me. Uh, I was no longer with, I don't know where it left off, but uh, within the relationship, I, uh, as I started to draw away from him, I would continue to have sex, but I would, I no longer desired him. I wasn't able to orgasm. I uh, wasn't able to get wet and I had extreme numbness. Like I couldn't feel a thing, but I was just going with emotion and I didn't communicate with this to him because I was so ashamed. And one way that I explain it, um, was it was like being an Olympic marathon runner and then all of a sudden not even being able to stand up. You know, it, it went from intense sexual experiences for 19 years of my life to, oh my God, please don't touch me because I can't feel you and I'm not getting wet and there's no connection here, um, which was so traumatizing for me. I felt so insecure. I felt like I wasn't a woman. I felt like I was broken. I felt like I was the only one that was going through this um, cause I had, I hadn't heard anybody else talk about this. Nobody else had ever told me that this could be anything, you know, and it ruined the end of our relationship. I became a bitch. I was a really, really, really rude person to him. Um, yeah, I was a really rude person to him, but he held it down and he held space and uh, we've talked about it since then and I've apologized. Um, and we've talked it through and I, I realized, um, that that was just a reflection of my own insecurity. Um, and then him and I broke up and immediately after I started having sex with another guy that I was attracted to and, um, I wanted to have sex with him, but once again, numbness, uh, dryness, no orgasm. And I kept it a secret. Um, not that you can keep the dryness a secret, but I didn't tell him that I couldn't feel it and I would fake my orgasms and um, that was that. And we dated for about a year and some change. And somewhere within that time, um, I met a really beautiful man in Costa Rica. And uh, when him and I met, it was like this big, it was a tantric experience. It, it was literally, we made eye contact and it was like, we've known each other for lifetimes. And we opened up immediately, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And I have, that was, has been the best sex of my life because the, 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 the conversations were sex. The, the dancing was sex. The road trips were sex. Like everything outside of the bedroom was connected and pleasurable and divine that whenever we entered the bedroom together, it was that much more, you know? And uh, that was a, a short-lived experience because we live in two completely different countries. But I was like, oh, that's what that's like. Like, that's what that's like, to connect with somebody in a conscious space at all levels. That's the shit. I want more of that. Coming back to the States, 19 years old, um, you know, I went back into my my, my own practices, continues, continued to have sex, uh, uh, outside of conscious place and finally it got to the point where I was like all right I'm broken uh I, like game over I'm asexual and I started to question if I was asexual and asexuality is people who don't have a sexual desire at all um and are quite content with the fact that they don't have a sexual desire um and yeah and I was like okay well that must be it like I, no more sex for me ever again no more pleasure for me ever again um and I hated that I hated 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 it hated hated that for myself and then I as did more research, started kind of doing more Google. Somehow I found Tantra and I found uh, uh, the yoni eggs. I found chakras and I bought my first yoni egg and I, I played with that, did some breath work with that. And, you know, I had a, I wouldn't say I had a porn addiction, but I started masturbating at 12 years old with porn and nothing but porn. So I didn't know masturbation outside of that. It was really awesome. I don't, I don't think I had an addiction to it, but I hadn't trained my mind to masturbate outside of it. And during my dry spell, um, porn wasn't even doing it for me. I would put a vibrator on my clit and couldn't feel anything. 
Uh, so I, I literally was like, what is this? You know, what is happening to my body? Uh, and then, you know, I started getting into Tantra and uh, sexual healing and understanding that other women that are survivors of sexual abuse or having these awakenings or, or when their body, when your body speaks to you, it will speak to you in a multitude of ways. And my body was saying, Michelle, you need to reconnect to me in a conscious space. There's some blocks here. There's some uh, experiences that we need to release, some deeper integration that you need to do into your womb, more softness, more presence, more sincerity in the way you connect to your pussy. And that was that. I never learned this in therapy. Nobody ever talked to me about this in sex ed. Nobody ever talked to me about the talk as a teenager. Nobody had ever talked to this about with my mother. So how was she ever going to tell me? But Tantra said, yoga said, ancient practices said, your body speaking to you. Listen, you know. So I did a lot of research, was looking at a bunch of different Tantra coaches. And I mean, I had 10 people listed. Um, and a, some of them were outside of the country. Majority of them were actually outside of the country and it was going to be an online thing. And I did, I had multiple consultations with a bunch of different people. And I saved the two that I wanted the most for last, which was Addison and then it was Kendall. And uh, I, I had this list for a long time and Addison actually posted this uh, newsletter one time that was like, I... I just got goosebumps thinking about it. That was like, okay, I need, I need this. This is what I need. And what you posted, Addison, if you end up watching this, was a letter that you wrote a long time ago saying something along the lines that you're grateful for your abuse. Um, and you shared your abuse and how it kind of took you on this journey and how you understand why that happened and all this other jazz. And um, I was like, okay. I'm, I'm sold. Like, let, let's fucking do this, you know? And I finally started doing all these interviews and I met with Addison um, and her and I dialogued. We had a little back and forth and the very next day I connected with Kendall. I had no idea that these two women knew each other. And as a matter of fact, Kendall at the time had her address. Luckily I called, or I think I emailed her and, and made sure the address was correct because I almost drove to Richardson come to find out that their office is like literally five minutes from this space where I, where I live. Um, but I met Kendall and I was like, fuck yeah, this is it. Like, here we go. Some, some deep work. Um, and yeah, man, working with Kendall, working with Tantra um, has saved my life. Yoga and Tantra has literally saved my life. And I have felt so much more healing and connection. And like, I've released so much more of not only the wounds that have been done to me, but also the wounds that I did to myself um, within these short four years of, of deep inner work than the six to 14 in talk therapy. Um, and yeah, so now here I am sharing my story with you guys, finally understanding uh, I, I uh, was coming off some plant medicine. Now I do psychedelics still, but in a very, 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 very conscious way. Um, and uh, January 1st, 2017, a couple days before my first yoga teacher training, I was coming off a psychedelic and uh, I had a deep conversation with God. And uh, my numbers are one, two, three, four. Uh, that's what I asked to see uh, when, I, when, I, when I need guidance, you know. And I was bawling my eyes out. For no reason, but I had this big release in the car and I was driving from Denton back to Plano and this big release and it was like 10, 30, 11 in the morning. I was leaving my friend's house and just crying and crying and I was understanding. I was like, okay, I get it. I understand why those 15 years of sexual abuse, I understand my drug abuse, I understand my self-harm, I understand this deep disconnection where I couldn't feel myself, feel myself. I get it. And it's to be on this journey and it's to help myself and it's to speak and to teach and to guide other women and other individuals into this beautiful practice. I get it. Thank you. And randomly at 10, 30, 11 in the morning, there's traffic, right? And my, I stop my car and there's a big ass billboard and a big ass tree over this billboard and the billboard or the tree is covering the majority of this billboard except for the phone number, the last four digits, which were one, two, three, four. And I knew right then and there, like I, I laughed and bawled my eyes out even more. Cause I was like, fuck yes, 
I hear you, God. I hear you, universe. I hear you, divine timing. I'm in this shit. Like, I'm here. Here's my journey. Um, so, yeah. That is my journey into Tantra. Um, and I'm still learning. I'm still uh, learning how to connect to myself a little bit more. I'm still learning uh, how to love myself, how to accept myself, how to play with energy, how to be emotionally mature, how to be uh, mentally stimulate myself, how to be conscious in my awareness. It's all a learning experience. And especially as I was going through the shadow work portion, um, that shit kicked my ass. And I mean, when I say kicked my ass, I mean, I was channeling some stuff back up where I wanted to cut myself all over again, like all over. And I was like, damn girl, like I thought we worked through this. I thought this was years ago. Um, and people would always ask me like, why'd you cut? Why'd you cut? Why'd you cut? And I never had an answer. And finally I realized as I was breathing through, like literally I had a, a, a scissor in my hand and I was breathing through. And I was like, okay, don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. And finally it realized that it was like, I was so in my head that cutting immediately put me into my body. And that's why I cut. That's why I needed to harm myself. And it wasn't until I sat there with sharp objects in my hand and my breath. And I was like, okay, I have options. I have my inhales and my exhales or I have a sharp objects. How do I want to get out of my head? I'm so grateful I have these tools now. Because once again, I was not taught this in talk therapy. I uh, wasn't taught this taught this at all it was just like oh you cut yourself you're doing it for attention you know um but yeah if you watch this whole video thank you so much <laughs> i'm excited to hear what you guys have to say um and listen to you guys' story i'm so grateful like it's been a wild ass ride and i am really grateful i love you guys a million times um, I'm ready for round two of the certification. I'm excited to get together with you guys in Costa Rica. I'm excited for our healing, our self-understanding. I'm excited for everything that we're going to share and guide other people into. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have a good one, y'all.